Hello, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm Katie, your host. Today on our mini-sode, we are going to be talking about this book called The Luminaries. It's a YA book that came out November 1st of 2022. So I actually just saw this on Goodreads. It has a lot of awards. Let me list them off. Uh, Best Seller, New York Times Best Seller, Barnes & Noble YA pick, Indigo Best Teen pick for 2022, Indie Next Pick, Goodreads Most Anticipated YA Book. Has a lot of likes and everybody loves it. I've also seen it everywhere on Instagram and TikTok. So I was like, I had to prioritize the luminaries. So this is by Susan Dennard. She also made a book series called The Witchlands. They are actually in production. Jim Henson picked it up, the Witchlands series, and they're going to make it into a TV series. I'm not sure when, I'm not sure who, you know, whatever, but... That sounds cool. Anything Jim Henson is like, perfect. So that's a little about Susan Dennard, but she's done a whole bunch of other books as well. That one's just the one that's been her big, big book. And now The Luminaries is uh, part one of her whole series of books that I believe are actually called The Luminaries. So I'm going to summarize what this book is about uh, real quick, and then I'll kind of tell you my thoughts on this book just straight up because I'm, uh, that's just who I am. I'm giving this book about a three out of five. If you haven't listened to our previous podcast episodes, go do it. Uh, I've done a lot of different minisodes for the past year or so, and you can find that at darksideofthelibrary.com. Um, but I have had a slew of uh, not the best picks, but I keep trying to read a lot of mainstream stream novels, and that might actually be the problem. Who knows? So this one is definitely a down-the-road novel. There's nothing extraordinary about it, in my opinion. And again, these are all my opinions. It's not fact. So let me run down the summary for you, and I'll break all of that down later. Okay, so the luminaries. This is kind of what the story is about. We have a town called Hemlock Falls. No, it is not Twin Peaks with monsters, but it kind of is. But Twin Peaks is great. So Hemlock Falls is surrounded by this forest that's filled with creepy monsters that kind of come up at night. Winnie Wednesday, Winnie Wednesday, our main protagonist, is a part of this family called the Wednesdays. So Winnie wants to join this ancient order of people called the Luminaries, and they have been the people that basically hunt monsters, and they're the ones that kind of keep things at bay every time monsters pop up at night. The problem is, is that Winnie's father was a witch or a traitor who's been exiled, like nobody's seen him, and uh, Winnie and her family, her mom, and just her family name has suffered because of that. So per law, per Hemlock Falls law, she on her 16th birthday can take the luminary's trial to be a part of the order. The thing is, though, she didn't go to, like, luminary school, so this is very difficult. And most people just don't want to do that because it's dumb, because not everybody gets trained to kill monsters. But she wants to do that. In order to do that, she summons up the courage to ask her ex-best friend, also resident bad boy, Jay Friday. Yes, all the families are all organized by weeks of the day. Weeks of the day, that's not right. Days of the week. Yes, that is what I meant. So Jay Friday uh, is the her ex-best friend, and he's the only one that can really help her train for the luminary trials. The thing is, even though he is one of the most promising hunters for the luminaries, uh, he seems to know a lot about the forest, about Hemlock Falls, about a lot of things that maybe he shouldn't because he's just a kid, a 16-year-old just like Winnie. So together, Winnie and Jay unlock secrets that are maybe lurking in the forest and within each other, and we go along this journey with Winnie on this whole trial and all, all kinds of other things. So that's a bit about the summary. So like I said, this book for me is about a 3 out of 5, and the reason why is because There was nothing extraordinary about the story. It was pretty plain. Most of the story was pretty predictable. There was no scare factor, but granted, I'm trying to 
be nice because I have, I feel like an impenetrable scare thing. I don't get scared very easily. And it's a YA book. There's only so much you can do here. There's so many parameters going on. Here are some of the things that I did enjoy. I've had a lot of books that I've been re reading recently that keep trying to do crazy things. So for some reason, they want to create, it's almost like they want to create their own genres, their own stuff, and they're making, they're being hyper specific or doing some weird mental gymnastics with their characters or their storylines. They're like, oh, let's pull in a twist here and a twist there and a twist here. And it's just, it's actually getting a little ridiculous. I actually enjoyed just how basic this book was. It was like, okay, Basic YA, supernatural, urban fantasy, plain Jane, whew, no guesswork involved and no crazy things going on up here and no just sheer ludicrous plot twists and just sheer stupidity. There were things that were kind of fun, but I wish there was a lot more elaboration on the world building, but I liked certain things like you know, how we have different families that go by each day of the week. So we have our Tuesdays, our Fridays, our Wednesdays, and they all kind of have just a brief overview of maybe their specialties or what their families have been doing over the many, many different decades. Wednesdays were great hunters. Um, you know, we have Fridays with different kinds of powers or skills. So I like that. I think that was kind of fun, especially for a YA book. Unfortunately, I just think there was a lot of plot holes here, at least for the world. Like, they're this isolated town. Why don't, why isn't there anybody else that knows about them? You know, there's a whole bunch of things I can nitpick about this book, but I'm not going to. I like some of the character growth that Winnie goes through personally. Um, So, granted, I think Winnie is an incredibly... I hate to say it. She's kind of boring. It's She has some defining features that make her really cute or fun. For instance, she's always adjusting her glasses, and I think that's precious. But um, for the most part, I think her character is designed specifically so we as an audience can put ourselves in her shoes. And I don't mind that in this particular case because she grows as a character and starts to realize specific things and that might help, especially young readers, kind of start um, figuring, navigating certain things out, especially high school, friendships, maybe even parents, too. If you have a divorced parents or parent, one parent that's gone, it might help with that sort of process. So I don't mind her character being a little more plain Janey. But unfortunately, here's something that I didn't like. So we might have plain Winnie that I think is fine. Unfortunately, we have a really plain J Friday. So as the love interest, no spoilers, I mean, for real, he's clearly going to be the love interest. There, I just don't feel like there's a lot of redeeming qualities. And granted, I think this is because we are viewing J through the lens of Winnie. And let me explain that a bit. So Winnie was initially kind of betrayed by two of her best, best friends. And when her father was revealed to be this traitor of the community, um, her best friends kind of turned their back on her and just never spoke to her again. I mean, they were very, 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 very close. I know, me personally, I've had, I've had a couple experiences like this growing up where I've had friends just turn their back on me and I didn't know what to do with that information. Maybe you have too. It's not fun. It's very shitty. So Winnie is kind of having to ask Jay for a big favor. They haven't been speaking, really. And she literally hates him in the beginning um, because of what he did to her and her feelings. So she initially kind of describes Jay as this like basically a stoner, but he didn't really seem to have any redeeming qualities about him. And it was really hard for me to justify why she was kind of falling for him, but I let it slide a little bit just because, oh, they used to be best friends. So maybe there's something there and she's dealing with some friend 
trauma that happened to her. I hope that makes sense. But unfortunately, as a reader that never had that trauma, with Jay specifically, it was really hard for me to make that connection. And I didn't really like their relationship because, I don't know, it it just felt like, Winnie, you can do better. You're awesome. Who knows? Maybe Jay will grow in the second book because maybe it'll be more about her relationship developing versus her trying to figure out who she is and then also her father, which brings me to the next part of this book. So a central part of the plot of the story is the fact that Winnie's father was exiled or he left and Winnie had to suffer the con- Winnie and her family had to suffer the consequences of having a traitor or a witch in their family home in their family home that still has photos of him like they still clearly love him but it's hard it's hard because it's like should they <laughs> love him so there's a lot going on there and there's a lot of emphasis on Winnie's father and him leaving but we get zero closure. Um, we get the beginning of the next story, and I have a feeling this will be the place where we'll establish more closure, but we don't get an arc here. It is a small, it was, it's a big arc in a small story, and I really wish there was a lot more closure here. And... You know, but we just didn't get that. Some other things that I did enjoy the, about the book, and I'm going to flip back to that because I want to end on a good note. The um, luminary trials are fun. They are a little creepy. So um, they're not super scary, granted. But I did like a lot of the supernatural elements that are happening in the forest. There is a little gore. There's a little, like, body horror and some weird stuff going on. But I liked the different creatures that Susan Dennard has decided to incorporate in her story. Creatures that you don't ordinarily see in a lot of books these days. Unless if you're playing D&D, I haven't seen a manticore in a, in a story in a long time. So it was cool to see like a manticore. There's like harpies, banshees. There's also your pretty uh, typical creepy creatures like werewolves and vampires, but they call them vampira. And they are uh, a lot creepier than vampires. They might even be their own subsect of monster. But I did like that. That was really, really fun. And finally, probably the next thing that personally I enjoyed, and I have a feeling this is because I did the audiobook. I feel like if I read the book, it would do the opposite, where this would annoy the shit out of me. Um, She uses a lot of automatopias, so like, rip, 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 or knock, 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 or pound, 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 you know, stuff like that. And I thought that made the story in the audiobook more exhilarating and fun and more lively, Whereas I think if I was reading that, I'd just be like, oh my god, I get it. Clickety, clickety. Like, stop. But because it was the audiobook that I personally used, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It reminded me of being a kid again and having somebody read me a story. You know, it was just kind of, I don't know. I liked it. So overall, I would give this about a 3 out of 5. If you are interested in an urban fantasy, something pretty simple, more fun, I would say. It's not an intellectual exercise, deep philosophical questions being answered or being presented to you. It's just a really fun, ridiculous uh, romp in a creepy forest and, you know, pretty like young adult romance in the background. A really interesting world, but it's not too deep. So if that's something that you're looking for, definitely check out The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. Make sure to check out our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com if you are looking for a brand new creepy read. We have a whole list of creepy reads that come out every single month. That includes things like comics, uh, kids books, nonfiction, etc. So if you are looking for something, check out those lists. I do because... There's just a lot coming out, and I forget about them. Also, join us on our socials on Instagram, Facebook, our podcast at Dark Side of the Library, and our YouTube channel, and our Amazon Live channel at Amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library. We've been doing a horror trivia 
and weird trivia on Fridays at 2 uh, Pacific. So we'd love to see you over there. That'd be really fun having a big trivia game. Make sure to rate and review on your favorite listening app and to subscribe, follow, and comment down below some of your favorite books that you've been reading this year so far. I know it's just January, but who knows? Maybe you've been reading a lot. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching or listening and have a creeptastic rest of your week.